Hello and welcome to our presentation on the hydrogen water machine. We're starting off by wondering what is hydrogen? Hydrogen is the smallest atom in existence. You might have noted in your chemistry classes when you look at the periodic table of elements, it's the very top left element. It's the very first one. Um, hydrogen is the fundamental element. It was the first element to ever exist and it's the basis of all other elements. So all other elements came from um, hydrogen. So it composes 90% of the universe. So it's present, uh, very present and available uh, throughout the universe. One of the most important aspects of hydrogen is that it is a carrier of electrons. It transports energy. So all sources of energy contain hydrogen. The more hydrogen a source of energy has, the more energy it contains. For example, if you think about the sun, the sun is a great ball of energy that powers the earth, basically, and it, it is composed of 90% hydrogen. Gasoline, on the other hand, which is a uh, fuel source for our car engines, contains 18 hydrogens, and glucose contains 12 hydrogen. Glucose is the fuel for our cells, and it contains 12 hydrogen. So the more hydrogen something has, uh, relatively, you can tell how much energy that thing has. So how do we create energy? We create energy from uh, breaking down glucose, which comes from our food, um, using oxygen, inside of our mitochondria, which is the engines of our cells. Inside the mitochondria, um, glucose is broken down, which is driven by oxygen, and as a result, carbon dioxide, water, and energy is formed. If we go into it more specifically inside the mitochondria, when glucose is broken down, it gets converted to um, NADHs. And these NADHs donate hydrogen and electrons into this electron transport chain located in the mitochondria. And this donation of hydrogen and electrons causes a pressure to be built up in one side of the mitochondria. When this pressure is built up, it wants to move out of this um, pressure filled stage into the inside of the mitochondria. And this pressure force is harnessed by ATP synthase to produce ATP, which is uh, the energy currency of our cells. It's much akin to um, a dam where the water is built up and the flow of water is used to generate electricity. Much, much like that, um, this uh, direction of flow of, uh, of hydrogen is harnessed by ATP synthase to produce ATP. So, um, what is hydroxyl radical damage? So, this is a, kind of a different schematic from the one seen before, but you can see the NADH donated here, uh, hydrogen electrons donated by NADH. Then it goes through the process, the pressure is built up here, and ATP is created um, like by harnessing this energy, this pressure moving downwards. Um, however, um, in this case, it shows electron leakage. So, our the mitochondria of our cells um, are the engines, and during this process, there are byproducts. And sometimes there is a thing called electron leakage. And when there's electron leakage, oxygen that is inside the mitochondria picks up the extra electron, which makes it a superoxide. And when the superoxide combines with hydrogen peroxide, which is also inside the cells in mitochondria, it produces hydroxyl radicals. Hydroxyl radicals are the damaging um, free radicals. These are the ones that go and damage DNA, they go and damage um, lipids, as well as proteins such as the ATP synthase. And when the damage occurs, the mitochondria don't work as effectively, and um, this damage spreads to other areas of the cell. So it's clear mitochondria are the source of energy and oxygen is used to drive that process. But there's this thing called the oxygen paradox. Um, we need to breathe oxygen in order to live, in order to break down glucose into energy. But the fact is um, two to four percent of all oxygen turns into free radicals. So not only does um, oxygen, where we need oxygen, oxygen is actually slowly killing us. Um, the fact that we're an oxygen-based system is just how it how it is, and we can't really change that. Um, but the one thing we can do is try to counteract all of the oxygen we breathe in and all the free radicals that are formed by taking antioxidants. Um, you can imagine kind of what how 
deep this oxygen paradox goes when you think about the lifespan of different animals. If you think about a cheetah, um, it runs very fast, it breathes in lots of oxygen, and as a result, its uh, lifespan is very short. It's only 12 years. As compared to a tortoise, a tortoise moves very slowly, doesn't need to breathe in lots of oxygen, and as a result, it lives from 100 to 500 years. Another interesting to, thing to note is that human athletes on average live 10 years less than normal humans, and this is all because of the increased oxygen consumption that leads to production of free radicals. So oxidative stress damage happens from inside the mitochondria and starts to damage the mitochondria itself and outside and it goes and spreads to the different parts of the cell and starts damaging and causes a uh, cascade of damage. So oxidative stress and disease. So many uh, different uh, diseases, almost 90% of all diseases have been linked to oxidative stress, which is caused by free radicals. Everything from cancer to diabetes to Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, autism. Um, these, are the, these are the big ones. But anything not related to bacterial or viral infections, you can think of them as related to oxidative stress. If you look up oxidative stress and a certain disease, for example, oxidative stress and atherosclerosis, then there's going to be research articles that show um, the link between the two. So if oxidative stress is the fundamental cause of most diseases, then what can we do to stop it? We need to take antioxidants, like I mentioned before. Um, however, when we take antioxidants, there are many limitations to the antioxidants that are usually available to us. Um, one of the biggest limitations of other antioxidants is, is that they are too large. Too large meaning that they can't get to where the free radicals are formed, which are inside the mitochondria, like I showed you before. Um, they need to get rid of, the quench the free radicals at the source um, before it gets to damage um, the outside of the mitochondria into the cell. So it needs to quench it at the source, but most antioxidants are much too large to do that. If you see the molecular weights of different antioxidants, you can see that vitamin C, which is a popular one, is 176, vitamin E, and coenzyme Q10 is a huge molecule, 863. So these, all of these antioxidants are very large molecules that cannot be absorbed very well by the body, first of all, and it can't get to where it needs to go to eliminate free radicals. Hydrogen, on the other hand, very tiny. Uh, has a molecular weight of 2, it's able to pass through any membrane very easily and um, be able to get to where the free radicals are formed, which is inside the mitochondria. So ability of hydrogen as an antioxidant, you can see here um, the different antioxidants, hydrophobic and hydrophilic, um, they can't really get inside, only one or two go in, um, and also it has to go through active transport, um, and these are the free radicals that are damaging the different mitochondria here, but you can see the hydrogen passes right through, and it's able to take care of um, the free radicals inside the mitochondria and inside the nucleus very effectively. So the second uh, downfall of other antioxidants is that they are not selective, which means that they can't take care of only the harmful free radicals. There are free radicals that are actually useful in the body, such as hydrogen peroxide, which is used by uh, the immune system to kill bacteria and viruses. And there's also um, the nitric oxide which is used as cell signaling to signal to cells and also to dilate blood vessels so these free radicals are very important to the body but most antioxidants cannot select that they just go after any free radical they see and it's more of a shotgun approach on the other hand um, hydrogen is much more effective because it goes after only the harmful free radicals in the hydroxyl radicals you can see here hydroxyl radicals here and then when hydrogen combines with it it turns into water so not only does hydrogen selectively neutralize hydroxyl radicals it turns it into water as well so this is more of a sniper approach it's able to take out only the bad guys um, the third downfall of antioxidants is that they become free radicals themselves after they give away um, hydrogen and electron to a free radical. So you can see this visualized by looking at this uh, diagram. You can see ascorbic acid here, and you see R with a dot, which means it's a free radical. And it becomes satisfied when you give it a hydrogen and an electron. But you see, once ascorbic acid gives away a hydrogen and an electron right here, it becomes a, it's left with the 
uh, with a dot, and it becomes a, a scoreable radical. So um, this a scoreable radical needs to go through some different reactions in order to be recycled back into ascorbic acid again, and that um, consumes energy inside the cells and it's not effective. Um, it's not as good as it should be. There's a way, if there's a way to be more efficient with taking care of free radicals, and that would be uh, hydrogen. Uh, like we mentioned in the previous slide, hydrogen takes care of free radicals uh, selectively, only the harmful ones, and it turns it into water, so there's no byproducts to be taken care of um, by other reactions in the body. So it's very, very per powerful, very efficient. So hydrogen has been uh, proven as a powerful antioxidant in a variety of disease models. Um, everything from Parkinson's to Alzheimer's disease to type 2 diabetes to hepatitis. So um, if you look up um, the recent articles, uh, we'll have a link in the next slide. Um, you can see the different applications that hydrogen has, but um, it's clear so far that hydrogen is the most perfect antioxidant, is the most efficient antioxidant. Another benefit of hydrogen is that it directly stimulates ATP synthesis. Um, this is a diagram shown before, and this NADH is from the breakdown of glucose using oxygen. And this NADH donates hydrogen and electrons to the electron transport chain of, uh, the, of the mitochondria to produce and drive the production of ATP. Well, um, NADH um, comes from NAD+. NAD+, gains uh, hydrogen and electrons from glucose and basically that hydrogen electron from glucose gets donated it gets transported into the electron transport chain well the difference between an NADH uh, which donates hydrogen electrons and NAD plus is the hydrogen and electrons themselves so if there's more hydrogen and electrons available inside the cells then there you can produce much more NADH which increases the donation of hydrogen and electrons to the mitochondria which increases the production of ATP so not only is hydrogen a powerful antioxidant it also stimulates ATP synthesis another important thing about hydrogen water is the clustering of water molecules um, normal cluster size of water is usually 15 to 17 molecules, while the microclustering of water with dissolved hydrogen is 5 to 7 molecules. Uh, we'll see why that's important in the next slide. So every cell contains uh, aquaporins, which are the channels that let uh, water in and out of the cell. And this aquaporin channel is very narrow. And if the cluster of water is too large, it might not be able to get through the aquaporin to go inside the cell and to hydrate the cell fully. Um, this phenomenon occurs because in every water molecule, um, the red is the oxygen and the white is the hydrogen. In every water molecule, oxygen is le more electronegative, meaning it wants to take um, the electrons towards it much more. It attracts it much stronger. So when this happens, oxygen has a slightly negative charge while the hydrogen has a slightly positive charge. And this, this difference in charges causes um, the, the negative oxygen and the positive hydrogens to attract each other. Uh, these are very weak attractions, but they're attractive enough for um, large water molecule clusters to form. But when hydrogen is, is, exists inside the water, it breaks these uh, weak attractions and lowers the clusters to only 5 to 7 molecules, which will allow the water to move more freely inside the cells to hydrate and to detoxify. Research studies on hydrogen, as I mentioned before, has been growing exponentially since 2007. All the way up to 2012, 2013, there have been um, just just a exponential growth of uh, research studies. Um, you can view some of the research studies um, here in these two links. You can view it at the research abstracts about hydrogen water. And we have some of the full articles that you can download off of the Google Drive at this link. So the methods of hydrogen intake include... Um, being next to the beach where the waves are crashing or next to a waterfall where the water is crashing. Um, this energy of crashing releases a tiny amount of hydrogen into the air that we can breathe in. Um, these are vegetables. The best way to get hydrogen is through vegetables which are from, which are freshly picked out of the ground. And as soon as you pick it, um, the amount of hydrogen 
starts to go down. So as soon as you harvest, um, if you can, if you're able to um, consume these raw fruits and vegetables, you you'll be able to get more hydrogen. In Asia, we have uh, hydrogen infused saline that is injected into the bloodstream. We have uh, inhalation of hydrogen gas, but these are uh, very precise protocols and administrations and it needs to be done in a hospital setting. It's not very practical, but however, we have the hydrogen water machine. You can drink hydrogen water to get your hydrogen consumption, which is very practical and very easy. Now we're going to talk to talk about the benefits of hydrogen water. Um, anyone can enjoy hydrogen water. Everyone from male, female, uh, children to the elderly, even infants, even pregnant women can enjoy hydrogen water. There are no toxic side effects. Um, any excess hydrogen is uh, dissipated from the body, so um, there's no toxicity at all. Uh, Hydrogen water increases blood circulation. You can feel your hands and feet get warmer. Um, you can feel the blood uh, circulating more effectively. It improves skin health. So when you drink hydrogen water, and you can even take hydrogen water in a spray bottle and apply it to your skin, um, it hydrates the skin and improves skin health. Very effective for that. Um, you get an energy boost when you drink hydrogen water. And also you can decrease body odors. Um, these are all... Um, something things that people talk about when they drink the hydrogen water that they see improvements on differences on within a couple of weeks usually um, the benefits of hydrogen water can be seen very effectively in any skin condition or disease in this example this is a uh, patient with eczema that gets treated with hydrogen water for a week and you can see the results here and you can see the actual case study at this link here. Um, this is a picture of uh, one of our business contacts granddaughter and she is actually ha had psoriasis and when she drank hydrogen water and bathed in the hydrogen water she um, recovered very quickly just after three weeks she was able to recover. So we talk about alkaline ionized water um, a lot of the times here in the U.S. Um, that's kind of the, uh, the discussion when we talk about um, water processing units. Um, and in fact, um, alkaline water does have some health benefits, but these health benefits are largely due to the tiny amount of hydrogen gas that are dissolved in the water, which is why when, when you talk about alkaline water, they have you process the water and drink it as soon as possible so before all the hydrogen dissipates. And um, the interesting thing about it is that one of the biggest alkaline ionized water machine companies, Kangen, uh, originally that technology came from Japan and that technology was invented over 30 years ago. And so that's the second generation of water processing and hydrogen water is the third generation of water processing. Um, in Japan, where Kengen originated from, now all they're talking about is hydrogen water. So hydrogen water is the future, uh, hydrogen water is the next step, and we have a hydrogen water machine here that can saturate the water with up to 1.2 parts per million of dissolved hydrogen gas. This is up to four times more than alkaline water. And the differences can be seen in the health benefits that the hydrogen water provides. Um, not only does the the hydrogen saturate in the water up to 1.2 ppm. It stays in the water for long periods of time. Um, every 12 hours, um, the hydrogen in the water has a half-life of every 12 hours. So 12 hours, you'll see 0 0.6 ppm. Then another 12 hours, maybe 0 0.3. But um, the level of saturation is very high, and it stays for a long time. So what about Kangen water? Um, it ha doesn't have very much hydrogen in it, 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 ppm, but it still has some health benefits, which is why uh, it's very popular. Um, the hydrogen dis dissipates very quickly. You have to drink it as soon as you process the water. Um, the Kangen machine, it wastes water, and also it is very old technology. So this is our hydrogen water machine. You can see it's available in two different colors and also available for private labeling. Um, so we can talk about that later. Uh, the hydrogen water machine is easy to use. It has high hydrogen content, which is saturated for a long time. It's very relatively portable and has easy maintenance. It has even a, a cleaning cycle available. 
So, um, the main difference between alkaline water machines and hydrogen water machines in terms of electrolysis is uh, going to be illustrated here in the next couple of slides. Um, what this is, is it shows electrolysis in a typical alkaline water machine, um, such as the Kangen. Um, what happens is this is the anode side, which is positive, and the cathode side, which is negative. Electrons flow from the anode side to the cathode side. And the electrons are usually taken from the hydroxide ion and are given to the hydrogen ions. Um, hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions together form water. But typically inside water, they fluctuate between water and separates into hydroxide and hydrogen, hydro, hydroxide ion and the hydrogen ion, and then goes back into water and they, they fluctuate back and forth. And when um, at the moment it is separated for, uh, for a moment, it, um, the, electro, the anode side pulls electrons from the hydroxide ion and sends it over to the cathode side, which is, and the cathode gives it to the hydrogen ion to form hydrogen gas. And the hydroxide, when electrons are pulled from it, it becomes oxygen gas. So you can see this all happens in one compartment, one container. And this diaphragm isn't um, selective enough to keep out the oxygen and the hydrogen from each other. So when we think about Kangen water, it's actually contaminated with oxygen from the anode side. It, it kind of leaks over here and goes into the alkaline water, so, which is why the saturation level of Kangen water is very low because oxygen is a much larger molecule than hydrogen, so it's able to push out all the hydrogen in the water, and also um, the hydrogen can't stay for a very long time or saturate enough because the oxygens are taking up all the space. So this is why um, there's a limitation in the amount of hydrogen that can be dissolved in alkaline water. Our hydrogen water machine, on the other hand, has a special compartment, special membrane that separates the two um, sides, the cathode side and the anode side. So the anode side takes uh, electrons and then gives it to the cathode side, which produces hydrogen in this water inside the beaker. You see there's a separation here. Um, there's a membrane that separates the two electrode sides. So inside the beaker, only hydrogen is produced, and inside um, the uh, the bottom of the beaker, only oxygen is produced. And this difference, the, the reason why um, hydrogen is able to be saturated for a long time is because only hydrogen is produced inside the beaker. Um, another cool thing about our hydrogen water machine is that we can switch the direction of the electricity. In the previous side, we had the cathode on top and the anode on the bottom. When you have electricity flowing one way, when the cathode is on, on the top side, um, the cathode is being negative, um, attracts all of the positively charged minerals and uh, uh, elements in the water. And the anode side attracts all the negative elements in the water. So they are sticking together onto these electrodes. However, Every once in a while, if you, when you do the cleaning cycle, you switch the direction of the electricity, and this, this side, which what used to be the cathode, becomes the anode, and this side, which used to be the anode, becomes the cathode, and as a result, all of the uh, negative minerals that were attached to the anode side releases because now it's a cathode, and all the positive uh, materials that used to be on the cathode side releases because it's an anode. So not only does the cycle produce a uh, cleaning effect, it also produces oxygen water, and this oxygen water can be used for um, as a disinfectant uh, to um, help uh, eliminate um, uh, bacteria and things like that. Now we're looking at hydrogen water comparison. So um, on this left side, we have the comparison of hydrogen water and the amount of hydrogen concentration between uh, different <clears throat> waters. We have the hydrogen water machine water, 1.20 ppm, as shown using this uh, test device that checks for dissolved hydrogen. We have alkaline ionizer water, which has 0.23. We have water from a hydrogen water stick, about 0.35 parts per million. We have normal filter water, which has no uh, hydrogen whatsoever. Uh, the oxygen reduction potential comparisons, hydrogen water has an ORP of negative 529, um, which is very good. A higher negative number usually means um, higher uh, reduction potential, meaning higher hydrogen content. And then we have the filtered water, 
um, and the tap water. You can see that this ORP is positive and that means that it's very oxidizing. So just regular water is oxidizing to your body, which means it adds to the amount of free radicals that form in your body. So product comparisons, um, there's different products out there, especially in Japan. There are many um, different products available in Japan because Japan um, hydrogen is a big industry over there already. Um, it's a $3 billion industry and many uh, products have um, been competing over there. We have the hydrogen water stick, which is very popular. We have bottled hydrogen water, hydrogen water pouches, alkaline ionizer like the Kangen machine. We have our hydrogen water machine and some other hydrogen water machines. And the difference is that ours contains up to 1.2 ppm at, at an average of 0.95 parts per million of dissolved hydrogen, which is way more than any other product. And at this at a very good price. Um, the reason why this product is doing so well in Japan is because it not only uh, creates water with a high amount of dissolved hydrogen, it also um, keeps it in the water for a long time. Um, most other uh, devices, if they're able to reach that high of a saturation, um, it dissipates very quickly. So ours is cost effective and very efficient. Um, so this is just a comparison of between uh, alkaline ionizer, filtered ionizer, and, and our hydrogen water machine. Um, you can see one a couple of things I want to point out is that um, our water cluster size is much smaller than filtered ionizer and a little bit smaller than alkaline, alkaline ionizers. We have a high negative ORP. Um, that can be achieved through alkaline ionizer as well, but you don't... Necessarily achieve the same amount of dissolved hydrogen as our hydrogen water machine. So our hydrogen water machine is clearly, clearly the the best in terms of um, high hydrogen content. So some marketing points um, that I want to point out. Um, so there are many different nutraceutical companies uh, that are related to the health and wellness field. They have their own product lines and. This water product, hydrogen water machine, can increase the effectiveness of other products because it not only stimulates the mitochondria, um, it also helps um, the cells work more efficiently by removing free radicals. When cells are working more efficiently, are able to um, transport nutrients and detoxify much easier and more effectively then it increases the effectiveness of, uh, effectiveness of other products as well. Um, it's also good for uh, detoxification when you drink lots of hydrogen water um, your cells are being hydrated and also taking out all the toxic toxins that are in the cell after um, you know many years of living uh, uh, the lifestyle of a typical American, there's um, lots of buildup of toxins through food, through chemicals, and things like that. So it's very good for detoxification. Um, it's relatively portable. So, uh, for example, the baseball team called the Giants in Japan, they take uh, a hydrogen water machine around with them to um, drink during during games and um, after games to recover. So it's very effective for that. Um, it's very effective as a beauty product. Uh, if you put the hydrogen water in a spray bottle, it increases skin hydration and tone. Um, the cleaning cycle oxygenation for disinfecting and cleaning chemicals off fruits and vegetables this is very effective for that. Not only does it uh, oxygenate the water, it also cleans the electrodes. Um, it's the best of its kind on the market for the price. You can't find anything like it. 1.2 parts per million at a retail price of $1,500. Um, th this is the reason why they are s selling in Japan 5,000 units a month on just online. So uh, it's very effective in that sense. It's the next generation of water processing. Um, you know, alkaline wa ionized water is was here and it's in the past now. It's the new thing is the hydrogen water machine. It's the next generation. And what we need to do is to educate people and transition them from alkaline water to hydrogen water. Um, research on hydrogen is abundant. Just use hydrogen water meter to prove that the water contains lots of dissolved hydrogen. They can visually see that so they know that the active ingredient or active material is in the water and then you know, you can show them all of the different uh, research articles done on the effectiveness of hydrogen for different diseases. So, um, very powerful, powerful tool, very powerful um, as an antioxidant. So, yeah, thank you very much for um, listening to the presentation. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.